1911 was a banner year for motorsports competition. The first 500 mile race at Indy drew 40 qualifiers to compete for the $27,000 purse. With an average race speed of over 74 miles per hour, Ray Haroon would pilot his 1909 Marmon Wasp to victory and into racing's history books. That original winning car is on display today in the Hall of Fame Museum in Indy and stands as an icon to those formative years in automotive competition. The Marmon Wasp stands as the grandfather of all race cars. When collector and racing historian Corky Coker set out to build a replica of the Marmon Wasp, he knew that accuracy was paramount. He teamed with Honest Charlie Garage's Greg Cunningham for the build. Both Corky and Greg have an extensive working knowledge on brass era cars and have collaborated to recreate racing's crown jewel as accurately as possible. Our shop here at Honest Charlie Garage almost always has a brass era car as a project. And a lot of those projects, they come from Corky Coker. He, he keeps us pretty busy with the brass era stuff. He's a big collector of the, the teens era cars, which we call brass cars. You know, the technology in, in that car is real similar to the later style, but it, it's kind of a derivative of, of uh, horse-drawn carriage and steam power. You know, the, the mechanics is, is a little bit different, so it takes a, a certain knack to be familiar with, with the ins and outs of a, of a T-head motor an L-head motor and, and the magnetos and, and uh, you know, even the shifting mechanisms are, are pretty elaborate. And uh, you know, we, we have the, the fortune of, of working on, on a wide variety of these brass era cars. So when, when it was time to build the Marmon Wasp, that was right up our alley. The team started by collecting as much original photography as they could find. We're all familiar with the Marmon Wasp because it's such a famous race car. But we weren't really sure what the details of the car were, you know, the, the type of engine that's in it, the transaxle wheels and stuff like that. So, so we really started with researching uh, original photos of the car and, and uh, photos of the car after it had been restored. We said, okay, what is it that we need to start looking for? And, and all those big hard parts that, that we don't want to manufacture, uh, we, we had to put our feelers out and, and in the end we're able to come up with an engine and, and transmission and uh, a lot of original hardware for a marmon. Their research soon turned to the source and over 5,000 photographs were taken of the original car. They noted details as minute as rivet sizes and spacing on the body. Every possible effort was made to document the nuances of the marmon wasp as accurately as possible. The result was what the shop affectionately referred to as the Book of Marmon a collection of thousands of photos, details, and notes that would be used in the fabrication of the replica car. A shop can generally replicate a car off of, off of photos, but that's going to be just the profile and uh, general size and shape. So to make an authentic replica in the way that we have on the Wasp, we had to get up close and personal with the car. We were given access to the original car to take thousands of pictures and, and measurements, and, and we made drawings off of it. And we took all those pictures and compiled two binders they are about this thick, two binders that we refer to as the Book of Marmon. The Book of Marmon was our reference material to, to reconstruct our replica Marmon wasp. With the research complete, the team started with just two frame rails welded to a jig to maintain the alignment throughout the build. Wooden bucks were constructed to mimic the internal dimensions of the car's original body shape, and sheet metal was hand-formed to fit the bucks. You can't just go out and form a piece of metal expecting it in the end to look like, like what it's supposed to. So you build an internal skeleton, if you will, out of wood. So as you shape the metal, you have something to compare to. Because when you, when you hold a big piece of sheet metal up, it gets unwielding at times and so you have to sneak up on it. So we, we take a piece of sheet metal up against that wooden buck and use that as reference until we get the size and shape that we want and then we trim it, riv rivet it together. True to the original construction techniques, body panels were hand built and fitted until the details matched the original photos as closely as possible, including any dents and dings. A powerful T-head six cylinder engine similar to that of the original Marmon Wasp was sourced for the project from an American LaFrentz fire engine. The team at Honest Charlie Garage pulled the nearly century-old drivetrain from the fire truck and started preparing to drop it into their replica racer. 
A 1911 Marmon engine is virtually impossible to find, and if you were to find it, the guy probably wouldn't sell it. So what we needed to do is, is install an engine that's period correct, and that's the similar design as the original engine. So what we've done is we put a T-head six-cylinder in this car, as built in 1911, and we mated it to a transaxle. So we have a combination transmission rear end, which is also period correct for the Marmon Wasp. Even the exhaust was hand-built to approximate the original car's race setup. No detail was ignored in the build. The seat pan was hand-rolled and formed to nearly the exact shape and size of the original. Even the cushion's material and button placement was duplicated. Wood for the steering wheel and shifter knob were handcrafted to match the detailed photos of the originals. A unique feature of the Marmon Wasp, the famous rearview mirror's size, shape, and position also received special attention. In 1911, race cars had both a driver and a mechanic that rode along. The mechanic did more than just fix the car, which most cars broke down in the race. The mechanic also spotted other vehicles, so they are also there for safety. They could tell the driver uh, who was coming up behind them and, and what to look out for. Well, Ray Haroon, being as, as smart as, as he was, realized that uh, you know, th there's an opportunity there for him to, uh, to have an advantage. So he wanted to streamline the car and also shave weight. And by doing that, he eliminated his passenger seat. Well, the, the other racers uh, decided, well, he does have an advantage, but how can we protest this? They, they protested by claiming it was unsafe. So that he didn't have that extra passenger there to, to spot him on the racetrack. So what Ray did, seems pretty generic to us, but back, back then it was, it was ingenious. He devised the first rear view mirror. So by all accounts, the rear view mirror that's on the original Marmon Wasp is the first one to ever be installed on an automobile. So this, this rear view mirror that we recreated off the original one looks exactly like it. It gives him the chance to, to steer the car, duck down behind the rear view mirror, and still see what's going on behind him. Special care was even taken to make sure the numbers on the replica closely matched the original. Designers took the detailed photographs and created vector artwork so detailed that every brush mark was true to the original, and from the artwork, precise stencils were made to transfer the numbers just as they are on the original car to the replica. Even the original Marmon Wasp benefited from the detailed replica build. Vintage tire specialist Corky Coker wasn't happy with the tires on the original car and built exact replicas of the tires the car raced on in 1911. As a result, both the original Marmon Wasp and the replica now sit on period correct tires. We were replicating the Marmon Wasp to every detail, and that included the tires. Corky wanted to replicate even the tires, the 34 by 4.5 Firestone. They have the three ribs on it. Uh, virtually all race cars in that time had, had what looked like a slick racing tire. Well, the original Marmon Wasp didn't have that tire on it. It had something that uh, looked like it was capped, maybe to mimic that tire a long time ago, and, and they, were, they were shot. They needed new tires. So even the original Marmon Wasp benefited from us replicating it. We were able to develop a, a brand new line of tire and give a set to the original car. So it now sits on period correct Firestone uh, racing tires. In just three short months and after hundreds of hours of fabrication, fitting and finishing, the replica was complete. In stunning detail, the greatest race car of all time had a twin. A passion for history and cars led to one of the most unique car builds in the modern era. While the crew at Honest Charlie Garage have built and restored several cars since, the Marmon Wasp will always have a special place in their memories. Our team here at Honest Charlie Garage were able to knock this project out in, in about three months. And that's, that's amazing, that's, that's almost mind-blowing. You know, so as we were rushing along on this project, you know, we didn't really take the time to savor it until it was all done. We stood back and we thought, wow, you know, look at what we just built. And, and what's really cool about it is this car's, uh, our car, our replica is used a lot. The original car, it, it doesn't get out much. It stays in the museum where it needs to be. You know, one of the most famous cars in the world needs to stay there in that museum. But we don't feel that way about our car. We get our car out, we get it on the road, we take it places. So the public gets exposure to, to an era of car that they never get to see.
You know, we're around these brass air cars a lot. So, it, you know, to us, it's, it's kind of run of the mill. But for somebody in the general public who's not familiar with, with a car like this, it blows their mind. They look at the, the polished aluminum and, and copper on, on the motor and they think, wow, what an attention to detail that they had back in 1911. Now when, when somebody's uh, designing a car, they, they do it with cost and, and function in mind. But these old cars, it had, they just had a style about them that was really unique to the, to the teens. And so it really promotes the old car hobby. It uh, lets people see you know, a different type of car that they don't get to see much and uh, you know, it just really helps us to, uh, to feel proud about what we do because it gets a lot of attention and uh, you know, we're really blessed that people enjoy what we do and, and are as interested as they are. Coker Tire is the world's largest supplier of collector tires and wheels. Our massive inventory has thousands of products for classic cars, muscle cars, hot rods, race cars, vintage motorcycles, and military vehicles. Call or visit the web. Our experts will help you find the period correct looks of a bias ply tire or the modern performance of a radial. Buy any tire and wheel combo now and get free mounting, balancing, and nitrogen fills. Give us a call. We'll treat you right.